as you can imagine, for that next week, all I did was obsess over the Triumph Bonneville Bobber. I'd already invested $1,000 into the bike. I loved the way it looked. I was really hoping that I just loved riding it once I did it the right way and that I would have myself a new motorcycle and the thousand dollars would be nothing. Watched every YouTube video under the sun, read every review. And keep in mind at the time, you know, my guess is I, I would have liked riding motorcycles under all different conditions, long rides, short rides, bobbing around town. So the fact that the bobber, most people agree that it's really not comfortable for long rides, that didn't really matter to me. Same thing goes with the Scout, really. You know, touring rides or whatever. I didn't care. I just wanted that motorcycle. I wanted to love that motorcycle. And finally, that long, long week ended and I was back at the dealership and I met with John and we had a great discussion and he, he told me, Normally, this is the way we do it. I like to spend some time with new riders, making sure they're comfortable. And so we went out in the parking lot, I got on the Triumph, and all we did were friction zone exercises. Get underway, don't use any gas, just use the clutch, see how it feels, balance the bike, turn around in a circle, stuff like that. And an interesting thing happened. Just using the friction zone on the Triumph, I didn't feel comfortable on it. For whatever reason, the bike felt top heavy to me. Where the Scout felt totally stable and comfortable, I felt like I was wobbling on the bob on the bottom. And since then, I've seen some people say that Triumphs have that characteristic. I don't know if that's true or not. But I think, quite frankly, I had spent so much time psyching myself up to ride this motorcycle that I really freaked myself out more than anything. And I just told John, I said, you know, John, I appreciate all your help. I don't even want to take it out on the road. It's just, I'm not comfortable on it compared to the Scout. The Scout was just immediately comfortable. Now, granted, the Scout was pointed towards the exit, so I just got on it and went. I didn't have to turn. It wasn't hard. So it was deceptive. But I said, John, I want to buy an Indian Scout. And he said, you're making the right decision. If that's what you felt comfortable on, and you rode it without a problem, good for you. Let's get you a Scout. Now, of course, in the back of my mind, I'm saying, dang, I just wasted a thousand dollars. But, you know, chalk it up to a learning experience. Now, when I fell in love with the Scout, the Scout I fell in love with was just bright red, brown seat. That's it. And they didn't have one in stock, so we would have had to order it. But he did have that red and white one, very pretty, with 155 miles on it. And he asked me, would you want to buy that one, the one that you rode? And I said, well, I don't know. It wasn't really the color scheme I was going for. It's kind of like a big candy cane. Not only wrong, it's classic, it's beautiful. But it's like, you know, American graffiti beautiful, not modern day cruiser motorcycle beautiful. It's got a classic look to it. Well, long story short, John gave me a great offer on that bike. And on top of the great price, it seemed to me he was also throwing in the thousand dollars that I had already given the dealership for the Triumph into the mix. So I got a brand new 2019 Indian Scout at a really great price. I'm not going to mention the price because I don't I don't want to hamper his business to sell bikes for as much as he possibly can. <laughs> Sorry. I got a really good deal on it. And of course, I, I was not prepared to ride at home. You know, I live uh, closer into D.C. I was not getting on the highway with that thing. So I had to have it delivered. And my plan was just get the bike delivered and spend time in a parking lot across from where I live just doing the basics. Of course, it couldn't be delivered for a few days, so that was torture. And it was finally delivered. 
make sure the camera's still on. Yep, I'm still getting used to all this GoPro stuff. Getting all soon. So I finally had the bike delivered. And I didn't leave the parking lot for days. All I did is I sat in the parking lot, I did the friction zone, emergency braking, getting it up into second gear. That's it. That's I did that for days. The parking lot by my house has a little turnaround area, like a cul-de-sac really. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. And uh, you know that that would let me turn around when I wanted to get it up into second gear and keep it in gear and just go for a little bit. And I practiced lots of low speed turning. Lots of low speed turning. And you know, for anyone who rides and anyone who's learning how to ride, low speed maneuvering is where the action's at. It's the hardest thing to do, it's the scariest thing to do. I'd say it's easily the most stressful thing to do. And I knew that just from watching various YouTube videos. And that was really important to me. And, and what I had told myself when I decided to get the Scout was, I'm going to become an expert at riding this motorcycle, no matter how long it takes. Low speed riding, low speed maneuvering, being able to do everything you see people who have been riding for years do on their motorcycles. That's what I wanted. I was scared the whole time, afraid of dropping it, afraid of accidentally whiskey throttling it and the motorcycle flipping out from underneath me. So I was cautious and content being cautious. But then a, a problem arose. After about three days of this, my gas warning light came on. Scout doesn't have a gas gauge. It just lets you know when you're about out of gas. And what I didn't really appreciate at the time was, as much as I love Indian motorcycles, their gas gauges are trifling. They are so inaccurate. My Chieftain has a 5.5 gallon gas tank and the light goes on. There's, you know, probably a couple gallons left <laughs> every time. So you basically go with your average fuel economy. The number of miles you put on a tank, that's what tells you when you need to get gas. It's totally annoying. But anyways, the Scout's even worse because there's no gauge. It's just... You know, the warning light comes on. So after three days, I have my gas warning light on, not appreciating it's because the gauge is really inaccurate. And I realize I've got to go get gas. I'm terrified. I've got to go out onto the streets, get to a gas station. Well, fortunately, there's one probably 200 yards from my parking lot. So the next day, I woke up at like 4 a.m. There's nobody on the street. And I managed to ride my scout to the gas station, fill it up, got home safely. I was terrified, but exhilarated. And doing that for a few days, uh, doing that successfully was like, okay, well, maybe it's time to get out onto neighborhood roads now. So I started that. The problem is, in order to get to neighborhood roads that actually gave me some room to move, I had to get on a three-lane 35 mile an hour road which was terrifying but again I got up really early on a Saturday no cars on the road and I got my scout on that 35 mile an hour road I started going 35 miles an hour in fourth gear which is the fastest I had ever gone the highest gear I'd ever been in and it was awesome I loved it I went a little faster than 35 perhaps hit some bumps almost flew off my motorcycle and saw how stiff that suspension was but it is what it is and I found this big neighborhood I was aiming for and rode there all morning long made it back to my place safely in traffic on that 35 mile an hour road and I was just totally jazzed Totally hyped up. Loved riding that motorcycle, even slowly in lower gear. And so the next day, I kept doing it. Did that for about another week. Just 
practicing stopping at stop signs, practicing doing everything together fluidly. Clutch, gas, brake, turning, looking where you're going. The thing that I struggled with the most was the turn signal. Uh, I always forgot to turn it on or turn it off. One of the two. It was annoying as heck. But eventually I got that too. And then I just, you know, from there, I think after another week of riding in neighborhoods, I went a little farther on that 35 mile an hour road. Farther, farther, farther. I ended up uh, riding down towards Old Town Alexandria on Duke Street. And just back and forth for hours. And then kind of towards the end of my second week, I decided, you know, it's time to try riding on a highway. I haven't done that yet. 